Our lesson this week picks up right where we left off at in our Sunday school lesson last week. In our lesson last week, we saw where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist to fulfill all righteousness, to identify himself with us. In our lesson this week, we pick up right where we left off at with Jesus being led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us to be tempted by Satan, the devil. Now, many people wonder, why would the Holy Spirit lead Jesus out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? And my response to that question again would be to identify Jesus with us. Jesus again was identifying, he was connecting himself with us because we live in a world to where the devil is always trying to test us, trying to test our patience, trying to test our faith. And in all three of the temptations that we will see the devil tempt Jesus with today, we'll see where the physical, the mental, and the spiritual we're all being tested by Satan. That is how Satan attacks us today. If he can break us mentally, if he can break us spiritually, then he tears us down completely. And that's what the devil desires to do. The Lord, from John the third chapter and 16 verse, he desires to dwell with us eternally. He wants to restore us back, back into the glory that he created us in, whereas the devil does not want us to have part in that glory. And so the devil does all that he can to hold us back, to hinder us and to tear us down. So that's what we essentially see here in the temptation of Jesus Christ. And something that I do want you to focus in on is how Jesus overcomes the temptation. How Jesus overcomes the temptation is how we overcome the temptation as well. So. Yes, Jesus, he was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. And we'll see there that Jesus, he fasted, we're told, for 40 days and for 40 nights. And in this fasting, Jesus, he communed with the Lord. He communicated with his father. He meditated on him. And we find something that I really love about this passage of scripture is that, again, it shows us the human side of Jesus. Because when the devil comes to Jesus and he tempts him, the first thing that the devil tempts him with is to turn stone into bread. That's because Jesus would have been hungry. Jesus would have been starving. He had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. He had fasted. He had gone without a real meal for a month and a half. And so the devil, he gives him a physical test, something that would be a test that was essentially of the world. Will you choose to turn these stones into bread? Will you give in to your desires of the flesh, if you will. And we'll notice there that Jesus, he overcomes that temptation by leaning on the word, the word of God. He says, hey, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. That is how we overcome the temptations of the devil. We overcome the devil. We overcome all that he puts us through by leaning on the word of God. We don't live by the world. We don't live by the riches of this world. We live by every single word of God. We live by his instructions. We live by his way. We as G1 believers, we are to be obedient to the Lord. In the second temptation, We'll see where the devil, he took Jesus up to the pinnacle of the temple, brought him up to the top point of the temple. And the test here, we'll see where the devil says, hey, throw yourself down. And if you do, the angels, they're supposed to catch you, aren't they? That's essentially what the devil was testing there. He was testing the Lord and he was testing Jesus's faith in the Lord. Will you give in? Do you really believe in the word of God? And again, that is something that is often tested of us today, our faith. Do you really believe in the word of God? We find that this is a spiritual test, if you will. Do you really believe? When, when Satan tempted Eve in the garden, right? What did he attack? He attacked it, the Lord's instructions. He attacked God's word and Eve knew what God had commanded of her and Adam. They were not supposed to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were not supposed to eat from that tree. And the devil said, hey, 
you can eat from that tree. Nothing wrong will happen. Nothing bad will happen. He was attacking God's word. And that's what the devil will do to us. The first thing, the very first thing he's going to do, he's going to attack you by the word of God. And again, we will see there where Jesus hit to overcome Satan's temptation here, we'll see where Jesus, he essentially says there, hey, you're not supposed, you're not going to test, you're not going to tempt the Lord. When we are of genuine faith, we have no reason to put God to the test. Now, there are many people who will put God to the test. They'll say, hey, Lord, if you do this thing for me, I will believe. Hey, Lord, show me a sign and I will believe. When we are of genuine faith, you have no need of doing that. And the reason why I say that is because you already know what God has done for you before. And if God can do it for you one time, he can do it for you again and again and again. That is our genuine faith. We believe in the Lord. We don't have to test God. God does not have to prove himself to us. He's already proved himself to us. God confirmed himself to us when he gave us his only begotten son. And then again, in our lives, in all that we have gone through, we have made it. We have overcome, not by our might, but by the might of God. So God doesn't have to prove himself to us. God, we do not have to put to a test. Faith is trusting in him, genuinely trusting in the Lord. Again, leaning on, depending on him and his every word. And in the third test of Jesus, we'll see there, where the devil again takes him up to a high point and he offers to Jesus, get this, the devil offers to Jesus the riches of this world. All the kingdoms of the world is what the devil offers Jesus there. And again, this test, I would say to you, is a spiritual test as well. It is also a test of the world. And because this is the third time here, back to back to back, this test becomes a mental test. Can you endure? Are you going to be worn down? The devil was trying to wear Jesus down. And we'll even see there where the devil says, hey, worship me. The devil attacks us over and over and over again for the purpose, again, of hindering us in our faith. The devil doesn't want you to believe in the Lord. The Lord, again, wants to save you. He wants you to dwell with him for all of eternity. Remember what the third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse says to us, that if we believe in his only begotten son, we will not perish, but we will have everlasting life. The Lord wants to restore you unto the glory in which he created you in. The devil, on the other hand, does not want you to have that. The devil doesn't want you to have the joy of the Lord. He doesn't want you to have the peace of God. He doesn't want you to enjoy the love of God. The devil wants to hinder you for that. And he offers the world. And there are many people who live in the world today who enjoy the riches of this world. And so that offer from the devil, there are many people who will leap at it. But again, we say that we are genuine believers. Should we leap at that opportunity to have the riches of this world? Absolutely not. Because the one thing that you and I know when it comes to the riches of this world is that those riches are temporary. They're going to fade away. And the reason why they're going to fade away is because this world itself, it is temporary. This world, it is going to pass away. That is according to the word of God. So again, we'll see where Jesus, he overcomes by the word of God. He tells the devil to get behind him. Because again, he's not living by the world. He's living by the word of God. And that's what we, again, as genuine believers, that is what we should live by. We should be living by the Lord's every word, depending on him, trusting in him, and genuinely having faith in him. It is something to me very interesting that again, the devil, the devil attacked Jesus, yes, when he was weak, but he immediately attacked Jesus after Jesus was baptized. It always seems like that's how the devil attacks us. When we are at the highest of our highs, spiritually speaking, the devil manages to squirm his way in and he manages to try and attack us. So it's kind of funny, on both ends of the spectrum, when we're weak, the devil attacks us, and then when we're on a spiritual high, the devil will try and bring us down as well. And that's what the devil tried to do. Our lesson, it closes off with, 
after Jesus being tempted, John the Baptist had been arrested and Jesus, he did not minister in the wilderness of Judea. We we're told that he went into Galilee to where he began to start his ministry. Now, I'm not going to dive into that part of our lesson here. You can go over to our website, newfoundfaith.org, to where you can look at the fuller commentary of our Sunday School lesson and give it a read. Or if you want to, you can listen to the full commentary as well. Again, that's newfoundfaith.org, and I certainly suggest that you go and that you do that as well. I, again, hope that you enjoyed our lesson for this week. Now, what did we learn? This week we learned again, yes, the devil attempted to tempt Jesus. He tested Jesus and he tested Jesus when Jesus was in his mind in a weakened state. Jesus was not in a weakened state. That's the second thing that we learned. Yes, he may have been starving physically, but spiritually speaking, Jesus was in a very strong state. That's because he was leaning on the word of God. The third thing I hope that you learned today is that when you lean on the word of God, you can overcome. You can overcome the world, you can overcome your enemies, and you can certainly overcome the devil as well. Okay? All right, so those are the things that we learned this week. That is our Sunday School lesson this week. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson, and I hope that you'll share this lesson with all of those that are around you as well. Again, I hope and pray that all you continue to keep others lifted up in prayer around you. And again, continue about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Until next time, I'll be doing the same. I'll lift you up in my prayers and I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.